Hi guys, welcome to The Social Block, the podcast that explores the intersection between blockchain technology and society. As always, we'll be exploring how this new technology can help us shape our lives, us as individuals, our institutions, our culture, and pretty much pave the way for a more equitable and empowered society. I'm your host, Maggie, and I'm thrilled to have you here today. And speaking of an empowered society, today's topic is actually something we've covered before, women in crypto. And our guest is the lovely Gracie Chen from Managing Partners at BitGet. A lot of you probably know her name and the whole reason I was able to get Gracie on as a guest is because BitGet published a report uh, that got sent to me and I was really curious. I had so many questions. It was all about uh, female-led startups in the blockchain space and how they're getting funded. So um, yeah, I was, I'm delighted to have Gracie on today. We're going to talk a little bit about the report that BitGet published and then go on to talk about uh, her initiative, Blockchain for Her. So that's a lot of ground to cover. Let's get right into it. Hi, Gracie. How are you? Great. That's lovely. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you too. I'm really excited to have you on. So, um, could we start with like you just uh, introducing yourself to our listeners who maybe don't know you, and maybe telling us a little bit about BitGet and what's going on there? Sure. Uh, I'm Gracie Chen. I joined BitGet about two years ago when we were relatively small. When I joined my firm, we only have about 150 people. Right now, we have 1,500 employees around the world. Um, so BitGet is a crypto exchange by CoinGecko, CoinMarketCap. We are top five by trading volume, especially uh, in the derivative market. And we are roughly top 10 for the spot market among all the global exchanges. Um, so... What one thing that I is I'm personally very passionate about is um, how to empower women in the more male-dominated industries such as blockchain, fintech, you know, finance and technology in general, uh, a more male-dominated industry. So we just initiated uh, a, a corporate social responsibility program, uh, a nonprofit initiative uh, during the Davos. World Economic Forum, which I call it Blockchain for Her. So I'm happy to talk more about this social initiative. Definitely. Yeah, I think that's going to be like the focus of our whole episode. And I have so many questions about the report that did get published about uh, women in the blockchain space, specifically as founders as well. So um, yeah, uh, before we go um, kind of more onto like the actual report and blockchain for her. I wanted to ask you um, about, you know, your personal story about getting into blockchain. I just really quite quickly wanted to throw that in as a woman in crypto. Like, how did you get into the industry? Sure. So I, um, I studied applied mathematics back in my undergrad. Well, when I was having my first job, uh, which was a TV anchor uh, back in 2014 and 15. Um, I had a TV friend who asked me, Gracie, you should check out Bitcoin. At that time, I think Bitcoin was only about 300 USD. Uh, and I read the Bitcoin white paper. I bought some BTC, ETH, and XRP back in 2015. So you can totally imagine that's quite wow. a good investment. Wow. Other than the fact that I was just as a fresh undergrad, uh, like fr fresh uh, um, graduate student that I don't really have lots of pocket money to invest in. I really regret <laughs> not investing Oh, that that's too much. me in 2019. I, <laughs> I was the same. I was like, I want to invest, but I don't have money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I did that in 2015. Uh, right now, I still hold lots of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP, and many other uh, altcoins. Uh, so my start, my journey in crypto started as an investor. Uh, in 2011, sorry, 2021, I actually invested in a decentralized wallet called BigKeep. And that's how I get to know the big founders because they are also investors. So when they, when we were like just chatting and they were like, we're looking for someone who has lots of marketing background. Um, anyone, you know, knows anyone who might be a good fit? And I was like, Volunteer because <laughs> I, 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 
um, um, co- I, I, will, I have been co- a co-founder and chief marketing officer for for, for some uh, web two startups, one in fintech, one in VR, uh, since since um, the past uh, seven years before joining Biget. So that was quite an interesting transit from an investor to an entrepreneur or um, to a real builder in the space. Yeah, it's, that's bold. I also love that like there was uh, the journalism and marketing angle through which you entered because I feel like that was also my journey like through PR and it's just really interesting because I feel like those are uh, professions that tend to be a little bit more female dominated than, you know, maybe coding and developing. So um, it's awesome that like you had that experience that I can really relate. So um, yeah, maybe we can move on to talk a little bit about the report. So guys, I will link the report in the description because I think you people need to read it and know what we're talking about and everything. But uh, can you tell us what um, what you found with uh, BitGet's report about female funded uh, startups in the blockchain space? Sure. So by this report, which we, we did research among all, all the blockchain companies uh, around the world, not just, you know, in Asia or certain markets, it's very global. Um, so we discovered that only 6% of the startups with secured funding in Web3 are led by women. You know, 6 compared with in 4, the other half. Um, and then the share of female-led startups is only slightly above 8%, but also decreased dr- drastically in the crypto winter. So um, this just indicates a significant gender bias in the crypto space that, you know, uh, very, very limited opportunities are given to women or probably ourselves, like women ourselves. Uh, many of us think, you know, maybe I can't do it or or, or we are mm, occupied The confidence by- gap. Uh, there is a noted confidence gap uh, with women. Uh, I think women are like twice, two times less confident than men when making like crypto investment decisions. I think that's what I, it's a stat that I talked about in the episode eight, uh, because we also talked about women in crypto. So that's very, very notable. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so those are some data. So I'm happy to um, talk more about those data, but I, I just don't want to bore our audience. Um, basically, there's a huge gender gap uh, that we want to, mm-hmm. you know, bridge. Uh, you just mentioned re- regions. Like, I just wanted to ask whether you noticed any specific trends, be- like region-wise. Was there any location on Earth where, like, female-funded startup, female-led startups were being funded a little bit more? Just, just off the bat, like, if there was any trend at all there. Mm, great. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if it's in the report, but we, we did find out that uh, in certain more developed countries, uh, females have, we have a more, a higher female ratio. Uh, and by the way, I'm studying at MIT. So that's like considered one of the top notch tech oriented schools around the world. Um, but by the way, if you can see here, Yay, so MIT. I, I, <laughs> and it, it says limitless. And this yeah. is indeed a women empowerment. Uh, this, this uh, club that, uh, that I joined uh, in MIT. Um, it's just so cool. Like, for example, in our MBA program, it's, uh, we have more, more than 40% uh, are females. Uh, in the NBA That's really program. good. Yeah, that's so, that's still not perfectly even, but that's pretty good considering the fact that it is like a technical university. Yes. Yeah, and uh, and back to your question. So you we we see a higher ratio of female leading companies in um, you know more well educated countries or, or more developed countries and more well educated uh, uh, regions such as the U.S., uh, the Europe. Um, and also, surprisingly, in China. Uh, by the way, I, I grew up in China, uh, but I lived uh, in Singapore and other parts of the world after my age of 18. Um, but actually, we see uh, uh, more and more female founders in many markets like that. Yeah, I feel Including like, China. Yeah, yeah it, it doesn't surprise me that China would be included because... I don't know. I feel like it's a very tech savvy nation. I've never been to China. I, I don't have like a lot of contact uh, with that part of the world in my daily life. But I just feel like it's such a technologically advanced country that, you know, I, I it would be a huge gap if like 50 percent of the population, you know, wasn't involved more in blockchain. So it doesn't really surprise me. 
um, that they're up there with Europe and, and the U.S. But yeah, um, thanks for the answer. I I didn't I don't think it was in the report because I was reading and I was like, I don't know like about the regions. So um, excited that I got an answer. See, so guys, you get exclusive content. <laughs> um, what about inspiration? Was there any specific drive for you guys, like beyond your personal drive and and like your obvious uh, desire for female empowerment in the blockchain space? Was there like other inspiration for the creation of the report? Mm -hmm. uh, you mean about this report yeah, or just my personal? Well, both, I guess. <laughs> but the report as uh, well. <laughs> so for the report, um, it's actually one of the reasons that we started blockchain for her program. Um, I mean, after after this report, we realized, yes, there's a huge gap and let's do something rather than you know just waiting on the data. Uh, another thing that drive us uh, to do blockchain for her is what what we did before. We call it blockchain for youth. So in 2023, I think around mid of 23, like the summer-ish time, uh, we started this initiative called Blockchain for Youth, which we want to empower younger generation. Uh, and we did university lectures. Uh, we invited, you know, many great guest speakers to speak at various great universities, including, you know, MIT, Harvard, uh, and then in, in Taiwan, in Vietnam, in um, in Singapore, in in Europe, in many countries in Latin America. So that that was quite an interesting um, CSR initiative that we had lots of positive feedback where. We don't just, you know, give talks, but also throw some hackathons. Uh, we got investors to look into those projects and evaluate them. Um, so this this was a quite quite success. So we figured in twenty twenty four, let's do something similar. Uh, we we are still continuing the blockchain for youth program, but we are also getting the blockchain for her program, which is targeting uh, two different minor groups in the crypto space who can be very much like the future of growth. And they should and be future. as well. Like it doesn't make sense for like smaller groups or sometimes more vulnerable groups or whatever to not be a part of the future. Actually, that's just not beneficial. Yeah, that's totally true. Awesome. So do you want to tell us a bit more about... Um, the actual stat that you mentioned earlier that women are only getting like about 6% of funding. Um, what do you think are the main factors that are contributing to this? Why? <laughs> like what's happening there? I have a few like theories, but, and we already kind of touched on it, but like, is there anything else that you want to add to that area? Yes. Um, just give you a little bit background story. Uh, I actually had did something similar in uh, 2019 or 20, I think in COVID, yeah, in 2020 when I was part of the World Economic Forum Global Shapers, um, and 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 you 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 can see that I'm I'm always very passionate about the subject. It's an oh, ongoing one, theme. Story. Yeah, one of the one of the reasons was that I myself is a victim of uh, uh, gender disparity or gender discrimination in the tax space. Because when I was uh, asking for or, or looking for VC funding for my startup in 2017, uh, I had a VC, literally, it's a guy, by the way, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> he literally just, you know, just told me that, uh, Gracie, we love your project, but we don't invest in female uh, entrepreneurs he actually who have said been, that yeah who have been married but not have a kid yet and uh, that was my status not okay <laughs> so not okay. not okay i mean probably he he probably well i, I still appreciate the fact that 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 he was so brave and and, he and said, said that yeah. so far. Yeah, but indeed, that's just like a slap on my face. Although that's not it's, it's not that literal slap, uh, but it feels like so bad. And I really want to make a difference. So um, back to your question, I think some this this probably tell a little bit in terms of what contribute to the gender disparity, like people uh, or, or or you know people in general, females and males generally feel, you know, insecure about women having kids and their commitment to family once, once they do. 
uh, and how that can impact their career choice. And, you know, as a startup founder, you need to be so dedicated, right? So this is one of, uh, one of the reasons or one of the factors. Another one, uh, which is broader, but not that specific to the female founder, uh, just, you know, g- generally like how, how we view females, maybe lack of commitment in career is, um, the, the fact that all these workplace are still very male centric. Um, those industries like tech, finance are historically male dominated. Um, so there is a lack of representative, representative or role model, uh, which is one of the things we want to address. So for example, I invited lots of uh, female leaders to join us and, as ambassadors to you know, showcase that there are so many great female role models in the tech space. Yeah, and then maybe another reason is about um, tech education. Like many women in the crypto space, they don't know where to start uh, to educate themselves and also very limited networking opportunities. So all of these are issues that we want to address in different ways. Awesome. I also read something in the report that like really caught my eye and it was the the part where you mentioned, um, you guys talked about how female funded projects are technically more uh, vulnerable to bearish trends in the VC market and less, um, well, less susceptible, I guess, or less able to absorb bullish trends. So essentially it's kind of like the worst of the both worlds, uh, which to me pointed to like this really, really uh, fragile, state of for female funded projects where you're you know you're just stuck between a rock and a hard place if like a bullish trend happens you're not necessarily benefiting from it as much as your male peers would but if a bearish trend happens you're being hit harder so um that was a very interesting um fact finding from the report which i think definitely you know it gives us a good idea of why we are where we are um But then I also kind of wanted to ask, because last October, I was reading a pitch book report which had female-funded projects stand at like about 2%. And if I remember that... uh that report was looking at uh, solely female funded pro- female founded projects um by which we mean like 100% of the founding team are women um what was the in the bitget report do you know like what the metric was like are we comparing apples to apples solely female founders or like 50% female founders i i don't remember either but i, I think the we, we didn't look at the sole female founders okay. specifically we are probably more looking for the so-called leaders, like the who is the 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 number one the, person, the main who, who is on the five. Yeah, Can we define that female-led okay. project. Or not? Awesome. Well, I think that's good though because uh, this is something I didn't necessarily like when I was reading the pitch book report last year because I was like, okay, it's two percent of like solely female founders, but that doesn't mean that you know there aren't other projects where a woman is de facto in charge or has a huge contribution. So uh, that that's really good because otherwise it's just kind of like this thing of like, oh, you know, if it's not all women, it doesn't count. It does count. We need to work with men, right? We're not trying to be the girls and the boys and see who does blockchain better. But yeah, there was um, there were more facts that like really sparked my interest from from the report. And another one was actually kind of related. It was the fact that there's twice as many more female-led projects being funded now, like 31, I think, is the number now, and it used to be 15. But the money that's gone into those startups is the same, pretty much, or something like that. Um, And I, like, for me, that's kind of a cause for concern. But also, it's good, because you're getting more projects out there, uh, which is better because there's more women, but we're, like, sharing the money essentially. So it's, it's kind of like, it's not fair. It's just like the good and the bad going hand in hand. I'm just like, what the heck? Um, yeah, that was another finding that I thought was really interesting. Um, but it dispelled something that I was wondering about for a very, very long time. And it was whether the lack of funding is just because, you know, women aren't as confident, you know, they're not going out with their project. They're not pitching their project like you did at the time, which I think is really awesome and badass. But um, they're not doing that. It was like, oh, well, maybe there's just like less female-led projects to choose from initially. But I don't think that that's necessarily the case if now suddenly we've got more projects, but they're still being given the same amount of money, if that makes sense. Um, I don't know. Do you get what I'm saying? 
Mm, yeah, I think definitely out uh, out out there in the market, there are fewer female projects. That's very true, uh, but probably not you know just six percent. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we we. We think we want to start from the root, like how many females want to join the space and or they can join the space. So we want to address these issues, uh, these issues from the root so that we can get more women empowered and people feel comfortable, you know, being, you know, women managers <laughs> uh, because all women in management. So be comfortable to, to lean in and to be that female leader. Yeah, it uh, is difficult when what? you don't have any example. Like I'll admit, it's it's weird almost because you just don't really think of yourself as like you don't imagine what it could be. You're just like, oh, uh, you know, I'm here, and you don't think that you could be there. For example, you don't doesn't even like occur to some people, or it does, but then they're like not sure about it. So it's interesting because um, I was talking to my manager earlier, uh, and she and I were talking about how we see three main verticals for the women in the blockchain space development. Like the first one is women as investors, like, uh, you know, what we look like, what we do as investors, what our habits are. The second one is women in the workforce. And then the third one is women as founders, as entrepreneurs. And I was wondering, like, uh, do you have, like, any specific, I guess, um, preference for like which vertical you think should go first? Because obviously the report focuses on uh, VCs, essentially the women as entrepreneurs in the blockchain space area. But um, do you think that either of these three verticals is more important or maybe significant? Or is there another vertical we need to really be focusing on? What's the best mm -hmm. one to, to go in with and like get those ladies in there? Yeah, I think it's still going back to to reflect on who you are, who you are as an individual, who you are as a professional. What are you? What What is your so called strength and maybe your disadvantages? And study those things. Like, what's your background? Uh, if we are talking about entering the crypto market or ent entering the blockchain entrepreneurial world from other industries. Maybe look at what you have done before. If you've been a marketer since like day one, just like me, you know, maybe do find a marketing role in a company, but uh, uh, alternatively you can maybe just do do PR marketing for uh, for like, like a PR agency, start your own firm or join a firm as a co-founder. And then, if you have lots of artistic background, for example, you was uh, you are you are you are a painting painter, you are an artist. Maybe you can look into NFTs. Uh, that's a very important growing sector in the crypto space, and I think NFTs will um, go hand in hand with FTs, the, the fungible to tokens, like the the, the general cryptocurrencies. But NFT itself is a very standalone. Um, interesting market. I just had a talk with Yatsui, uh, the founder of uh, Animal Cup Brands, yesterday. So we chat a lot about NFTs um, to to you know let let people um, read read that um, or watch that uh, episode we did. Uh, but anyway, uh, study what's your your strength, what's your butter and bread. Um, some may have come from a finance background. I actually, I also did CFA level one. Um, not 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 doing the later ones, but CFA is this something called Chartered Financial mm -hmm. Advisor. Yeah, we uh, have a couple of people who have done it at Nexo as well. Um, it's it's a big deal actually. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a quite so interesting. Congrats! Job. Dang, <laughs> you go, girl. You really need to spend lots of time, like at least three three hundred hours on on yeah. the subject in order to one level and there are three levels in total but anyway so if you have a cfa background maybe you can start by looking at some v zeros or, or uh, analysts or traders so it really depends on what's your bread and butter and what what's your aspiration in order to do i don't think there is like specific vertical that females should focus on but i do encourage everyone to reflect on your background and try to connect the dots yeah, I was thinking more in terms of like businesses, like as a company, like which one of these three do you try to push most in order to be able to gain, get the most 
women into the blockchain space. Like that was like my my wonder, like me wondering, because like right now with like blockchain for her, I, I feel like the focus is very much on the entrepreneurship aspect. And then you've got like other projects that are focused more on like getting women into the whole blockchain situation as investors, which are also great, like educating them, making sure that they feel confident with like their skills and everything. Um, I feel like there's a little bit less being done for women in the workforce by specific organizations, but then it's like the actual companies, like the big ones, all the big exchanges, all of the big uh, wealth managers are all doing that uh, internally. So yeah, I was just interested in like whether you have like a specific favorite vertical for like, from like a business standpoint, what like a big company with essentially a lot of money can do for like, because like with blockchain for her, you're definitely targeting the entrepreneurship vertical. I feel like you've just got that right pinned down. Mm. Oh, that, that is true. Wait, wait. This program is more targeted to the entrepreneurial world. Um, for for Biget, we as a big company with 1,500 employees, we actually also did an internal research. We find out that forty uh, percent of our managers are female. Oh, good. The That's women in leadership great. narrative. That's a lot, exactly. actually. Very few companies have more than 30 in the blockchain space. And I remember this from a research that we did last year as well. Very, very few are above 30. Exactly. So as, as a company, when we are hiring, we don't really care whether you are female, male, you're married or not, where you are based, do you have a kid or not. We don't care about those things. We care about what you can really bring to the table. We care about results. We care about, you know, true impact that you as individual can make to the company and to the, the whole crypto uh, industry. So uh, initiatives like blockchain for her is targeting entrepreneurs, VCs. Uh, but we as a company, we actually is quite uh, female oriented when yeah. it goes to You have the you know, workforce hiring. thing going on. Nice. Yeah. We just don't have a separate fund for that, which we don't think it's necessary. Well, no, no. Um, it's, a, it's an ongoing initiative that companies have to like lead and have internally. It's not something that you need to like separately do. It's, it's just a separate initiative that goes on. It's ongoing rather than, you know, the entrepreneurship. I was just wondering whether like you had a favorite of the three verticals because I'm very much, I think I'm a workforce person. Like, I think that that's where a lot of the impact happens because that's where it happened for me personally. Um, but yeah, it was just a curious question. Um, but we talked about your, your fund and like, do you want to start with like uh, talking to our listeners a little bit about what blockchain for her is exactly so that they get a good idea? I know there's a lot of things that you have lined up within that initiative. Yeah, totally. So uh, first of all, let me be clear, we will spend some money on this and, and that's that's not a small number we're talking about. So we have a commitment of 10 million USD to spend on this initiative where we will launch incubation program tailored for female entrepreneurs uh, and host pitches. So uh, the upcoming East Denver in end of uh, February, early of March, I'll travel to Denver and um, host something around this with some partners uh, where we can, you know, open up the door for the female entrepreneurs to come and speak um, and pitch their project. And then uh, we also... I actually invited, like I mentioned earlier, invited a few female leaders. Some are entrepreneurs, some are venture capital uh, firm founders who will provide necessary support and mentorship for women in the crypto space. So they join me as um, ambassador and then they will commit their time to be judges, to be mentors uh, for the space. And also, uh, we are. Uh, I think we, we initiate a, a award called uh, Women in Blockchain uh, Summit Awards. So we are, show, we are going to showcase some achievements in um, those summit and, and event where we can bring the, um, the you know, bring up the, the leaders in the space. A, a few other things that we haven't really decided in terms of nailed, uh, but those the previous ones are like the confirmed ones. But a few other things I'm exploring is, um, for example, get an online education program uh, for 
tailored for women, uh, and then build up a network through our partners. Maybe, uh, for example, this this Taiwanese girl Caroline, uh, I invited her to be an ambassador as well. But she also has an organization based in Asia, uh, which is called Ta Zhidao. In in Chinese, it's um, what what you if you translate it, it means like she knows. Uh, but also, it's a Dao. It's a it's a Shi Dao. Um, it's so Shi Dao. I love that. <laughs> it's a Her Dao. Basically, so it's it's in Chinese Ta Zhi Dao. But anyway, um, those initiatives or 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 organizations who share the same passion in terms of, of empowering women in the blockchain space, we want to work with uh, those organizations in order to build a stronger network. For everyone, that's awesome because I feel like there's so there's quite a few organizations and associations for women in crypto and women in blockchain, and they're all doing their own thing. And I feel like if there was just someone to sit there and be like, okay, let's all come together and let's all make something big, the impact would just be boom. You know, I feel like it would be way bigger because they all have members. Like some of them have membering organizations, some of them have like individuals. As members,、uh, they're all structured a little bit differently, but I feel like the impact could be bigger if a big player who's willing to really sit there and like put their money where their mouth is and invest and be like, okay, let's all of you, let's talk and let's make something big. I feel like that could be monumental. So awesome.、Um, and I think you、uh, you introduced your initiative in Davos at the World Economic Forum. Is that right? Is that where it, like yeah?、Uh, how was it received? Did you get like any reaction response? Did you actually、uh, introduce it on stage, or was it more of like the announcement hit while you were there?、Uh, due to another travel in itinerary, I wasn't able to make it to Davos, although that was the original plan.、Uh, I I made the initiative online、um, about you know how how we how we wanna. Launch this and and what other things we want to do, and、uh, interestingly, in the audience,、uh, there were a few females and males that I know or who know me. So I had a female friend who is a startup founder in the space. Actually, I think her company is within, um, it's is in the security space. Like they do、uh, statistics. Sorry, they do code auditing. For、uh, crypto projects, and it's it's definitely a top one,、uh, based in Europe. But basically, the, that founder texted me and sent me a video, said, "Well, that's a great initiative. How can I be part of it?"、Oh, wow! Like, yeah, I should have. You, how come I forgot?、Uh, and then I got support like her、uh, from those like multiple female entrepreneurs, and they. Uh, actually, approach me to be an ambassador, but of course, I'm happy to do. I, I will probably invite her anyway down the street. It's just like we just launched it. We, I haven't figured out like how many ambassadors we want to have, but anyway, very well received, and there are supports from people like her、uh, who want to be part of the program. And then we are also talking to other、uh, female organization leaders for partnership. So、uh, I'm again very happy to do that. Uh, in Davos, which is like a focal eye of everyone right now,、um, in early twenty twenty four. But more importantly, I think in twenty four twenty five, we're going to see potentially a, a super cycle of of Bitcoin or bull market.、Um, so right now, it's the best time for anyone who are interested in the space to enter and to get to. Know more about blockchain in general, so that they can do something.、Um, you know, build something, and we want to be part of it or or empower those people、uh, in order to achieve that. So you mentioned like the support you got from the the ladies who were in Davos and like in the audience and everything,、uh, and something that、uh, I talked about with Amanda Wick, who was like my previous guest, who we talked a lot on this topic about, and、um, she mentioned that like her association is very specific about the fact that it's not an association just for women; it's an association for women and allies of women in the blockchain space, which includes men. And I was just wondering, like, when you were presenting in Davos and like you got this. Like great response from the the female founders, or even just like women in the space. Did you get like a good reaction from men? Did you feel like there was like going to be a support from、uh, the non women, so to speak, in the room? So, did you,、uh, was the question about did I get a good、um, feedback from males? Yeah, like what was the the response? Yeah, in like outside of the little 
well, not little, really big bubble that is like women, what response did you get from like everyone else there who like, do we feel like we have allies in the face of like the men in the space or were there more neutral or like lacking a specific response as in like, this does not apply to me? Mm. Uh, I, I feel, I feel uh, in terms of blockchain for her, because it just happened, I, I mainly got reactions from females who said, yes, I want to be part of it or I want to be an ambassador. Uh, but in general, for the past uh, six, seven years of battling uh, the discrimination, I think I, I got a fair, a good fair of uh, amount of uh, support from guys. Uh, by the way, before joining Beget, I also initiated another female-oriented initiatives called She Shapes under the, the World Economic Forum Global Shakers community. And we have uh, six co-founders who started that program. I, I was the main initiator. Uh, I was also the founder. But uh, including me, the six co-founders, we have three guys in our group. No, let me count. Is it two or three? One, two. Yeah. Oh, sorry. We have two guys within our six, six of us and four ladies. And those two guys, they also have their own company. They are super, um, super uh, so-called dedicated in, in this. And I asked one of them, like, why are you as a guy being, uh, being interested in this female, obviously very female uh, and women-oriented uh, program? So what he said is... Um, First of all, he has his own firm. He's a CTO and co-founder of a AI crypto company. Uh, but that guy had shared this passion because he sees the merit of having more women in the space. Uh, he studied in the U.S. And, and lived quite a few years in the Silicon Valley. So he also mentioned that in the Silicon Valley culture, there is a uh, so-called norm that when 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 a family had had a baby, both the male and the female, you know, the dad and the mom needs to take a break, needs to take a leave, equally maybe three months uh, paternity leave. But that's not happening in many other parts of the world. Um, so she, he wants to, you know, address certain issues like this. Um, so I think that's that's some something really inspired me because I know we're not battling this ourselves. Like you said, this is not just like a girl's that we want to disassociate ourselves from the guys because both parties need to work together in order to build a more uh, equal world for the crypto space. Yeah, yeah, so that's good. It's good that you've had like the male allies, male support along the way. And I hope that like blockchain for her gets more of that as we go. You know, when you mentioned uh, maternity and paternity leave, I had like a... Um, Another memory of uh, some kind of report or, or study that I read, it was sociological in nature, uh, and it was about when a woman has a child in the business world um, and she comes back after having a child, she's usually like being kind of mommy watch. So basically she's being monitored for like every mistake she makes is like criticized more because like, oh, it's because she's distracted and she's not sleeping because she has a baby at home. Uh, it's harder for her to get promoted or to get her salary raised because people just assume that like, you know, oh she has a baby she's going to be distracted by that whereas when a father comes back from paternity leave this uh, this study was like actually they get praised for it they they get cut slack so if they're late for meetings or stuff regularly they're like oh he has a baby at home you know he's trying to be like a good dad and I was reading this and I was like oh that is like a really bad bias like that's a painful bias to to actually like read about and realize that it's there um that was just a little bit off topic because we talked about like, you know, the the whole like bias with like women and having the kids and like what's going on. Um, but you mentioned a few programs for blockchain for her. Um, there was one of them, uh, I think, female entrepreneur incubation program. Can you tell us a bit about that? Like, what does it look like? Uh, sure. The incubation part, uh, I guess, again, we want to you know form this stage for the entrepreneurs to come and pitch. Uh, and uh, we'll probably have the first one during East Denver. Um, so we haven't decided on the format exactly whether it's more like a hacker house, smaller space where people are just close to each other um, and, and, and pitch and talk, or it's an onstage thing. I personally would 
prefer the first one so that we can form a closer relationship. Um, but again, my, my marketing team is working on that specifically. Um, but we are also working with lots of other incubators, uh, especially uh, like Foresight X, which is uh, one of the firms that we, we invested in. Um, and Foresight X, which it is an incubator, by the way, um, under the under the name of Forza Ventures, uh, our investment arm. So Forza X, well, the CEO and and the the main head is actually another woman uh, that I I really love. So she came from a very strong Web two uh, VC background. She is the founding partner of a huge VC in in China in Beijing. Uh, anyway, so we want to work with organizations like that in order to um, have a very solid incubation program uh, be here led uh, for the female-led startups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I like your first idea a little bit better because because of the whole confidence thing. Like, you know, when you put someone on, whenever there's like a big stage and thing and people are in the audience, there's this like moment where, you know, all the people are just looking and like listening. And it's this like contract of you will be passive in the audience. And then the only people who will be active are going to be up here. Whereas if you have a smaller space or like just not a stage to audience space, you have this more like quantum situation where people are more likely to make right connections, feel comfortable speaking up because they're only speaking to, you know, people in front of them, like two or three people, little clusters, whatever. I feel like um, I totally understand why you would be partial to something like that. I'm really excited to see how it turns out. I don't know if we're going to have a rep uh, from Nexo at ETH Denver, but if we do, I'm going to make them um, check it out and stuff. I just, I really want to know how it goes. Um, what yeah. about... Help me broadcast, that, uh, help me broadcast the, the fact that we are looking for great projects uh, we're also looking for more ambassadors to join us who are founders of maybe VCs or good startups in the space. Um, you know, just just help us broadcast. And if anyone, you know, uh, also going to East Denver, feel free to um, check out my Twitter uh, and Begets Twitter because we will share more details about those events. And feel free to join us at the Hicker House and, and take a look. So what about the uh, competitions that you mentioned, like between female-led startups and stuff? Like I, I briefly remember reading something about that, like um, pitch competitions, I guess. Would those be taking place within the incubation program or is that something separate? It's, I think it's within, it's mainly within the incubation program. Yes. Uh, we, we want to have this platform where females can showcase their achievements. Uh, for in front of the investors, uh, and then hopefully we can help those uh, female-led startups to secure more funding. Um, yeah, but that's that's mainly the the incubation program. Okay, is there any kind of startup that you, like female-led startup that you're specifically really excited about seeing? Um, not just within the incubation program, but like in general, is there anything that you're just like I really want to see a woman create this and lead it? Uh, I'm I'm more uh, interested in the tech heavy startups uh, because blockchain is a very important technology uh, where which can change how people interact, how people do finance. Um, so let me just give you a quick example. So I know uh, Scrolls co-founder uh, uh, Sandy Pen. So Sandy is uh, is a great female leader who is building on the ZK layer two projects. So I think something like that is what I'm personally more interested in, very tech heavy. Uh, she really knows the, the business very well, much better than I do, at least about uh, layer twos. Um, don't be afraid of, you know, jargons or technological terms. Um, throw yourself into things to, to, to study them, to get hands dirty. Um, to into the tech tech heavy stuff, and also if you if you do you, if you if you want to do something in this space, you you will need a team as well. Uh, you can find a uh, a co founder CTO. Uh, you know, re reach out to everyone. And I also met lots of great coder female coders, especially in MIT or in blockchain space. Uh, those are great people as well. Uh, but generally, I'm 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 excited to foster more tech-heavy startups. In terms of specific sectors, I think 
you know, many things that you can do right now. Um, from a broader perspective, I think depend. Um, then uh, layer twos and uh, gaming. These are some specific sectors that uh, that I do see huge opportunity in 2024. And by the way, Bitcoin ecosystem, uh, such as Bitcoin layer twos, uh, or, or inscriptions and uh, uh, and new new protocols in the in, in order to fasten the Bitcoin transactions. Um, so things like that were very worth developing. And uh, you know, don't be afraid of tech heavy stuff. Awesome. So tech heavy things. I was I like that you said that because I feel like when I was um, looking around for, you know, just examples of what kind of, um, you know, female led projects are out there, what, you know, I would want to see. I was I'm always like really worried where people are just kind of close women into the single like if they're creating something and it's a female led project, oh, it must be something to do with women. And I I don't like that narrative. I'm just like, just because we're creating projects or associations or NFT collections, you know, the ones that are like World of Women, Boss Beauties, that kind of thing, women and weapons, which I think is a <laughs> great name actually. But, you know, just because we're creating things focused around, you know, our gender and empowering each other doesn't mean that, you know, that's the extent of our value in the blockchain space. And it really bothers me when people think that, like, anything that's meant, like, female empowerment means just doing more, like, for the sake of more female empowerment. It's actually about the technology in the end, isn't it? It's about either the tech, the finance space. So I really want to see kind of serious female-led projects that, you know, the project is heavy in and of itself and it's not being, it's, it doesn't like revolve around the fact that there's a woman involved. It's just, you know, a woman being competent and, you know, doing her thing. So I'm glad that you said that. I'm really excited with, to see what comes out. Um, actually, do you envision a wrap for blockchain for her? Like, is is there like a... Do you see an end date for the initiative or is it something that you want to keep going indefinitely? Uh, I, I don't think we set an a ending date yet, uh, but at least something we want to do for one or, one or two years. Uh, whether we'll have it indefinitely, I think the support in female projects will be indefinitely, but probably not uh, everything under this initiative, like when, when we kind of spent all the $10 million that we create, we will see whether we want to come in more or or we we'll just let it flow or let it drive itself. That's a little bit far down the street for us to decide. But right now I want to focus on making this happen and uh, making it more influential and empowered uh, to to the space and really make an impact. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So you already mentioned kind of one really nice success story, but are there any other um, success stories for women founded projects that you would like to share? Because I firmly believe that um, like sharing each other's experiences and like actually putting those people who made it up there and showing them is like a good example for people to be able to see themselves in the space. So any other ones that you want to share with our listeners? I do have a role model in the blockchain space. Her name is Katie Hong. Um, so she is the uh, she was a partner at A16Z, also a board member at Coinbase. Uh, I think about one or two years ago, she started her own fund called the Hong Capital, and I think she raised about one billion USD, uh, and that's the the, the largest uh, uh, female single GP kind of found in the crypto space. And I was really inspired by her journey, uh, like growing up in, in in the US and then got very well, very well educated. I think she came from a lawyer background uh, in Stanford University. But anyway, um, she's my role model and I kind of want to, you know, be, become her. Um, <laughs> I hope that we can share more role models like this um for the for the general audience so that we know that you know you, you will be able to imagine that better when you really see someone um i think kelly hong is my role model and uh, let's you know just bring role models like this to a bigger audience uh, where you shouldn't be um intimidate, intimidated by 
um, by the fact that you are female and you know just lean in and lead um, and, and do do your stuff and do it well. Awesome. That's a, that's a good one. I think I'll look her up because she sounds really interesting. Um, but it kind of led me on to my next um, kind of semi question. And it's something that I actually ask more in my personal life than I do on this podcast or whatever. Whenever I meet a woman or I'm talking to a woman who I find inspiring or sometimes even like I feel intimidated by because I'm like, oh, wow, this person has achieved so much. I always ask them um, like what their number one tip would be to give me as like uh, a young person in my 20s for, you know, just succeeding in, in my career and with my life. Like what's the one thing you you would tell me? Um, for you? Uh, I would say people are not paid by how hard you work, uh, how hard you work, but by how hard you are replaced. What I mean by that is, uh, it's, for example, at Biget, we don't really care, you know, either are you here in the office from nine to six? That doesn't matter. What matters is the result you bring to the table and, and how you can do your work so well that you are so irreplaceable um so that's that's just something that kind of uh, uh awaked myself when when i was a bit younger um that i always thought you know to work hard 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 but it's actually not about how hard you work or how much time you put in but about how hard it is to replace you. Uh, so I think it's so important to find that irreplaceability, find your own bread and butter, find your own strength and magnify it and really bring a bigger impact to your organization or, or the industry. Thank you. Um, that's, I actually keep these things written down for myself. I have like a few women I've already asked and I've, I always write them down. So I will try to focus on that. Hopefully <laughs> I am hard to replace, I hope. Um, well, kind of coming back to uh, not just me and my little personal agenda, but uh, what do you think women's biggest strength is in the blockchain space? And I asked this question, I asked Amanda this question when she was on, but I think this is something that I think we need to explore because we talk so much about our weaknesses, gender bias, how we're struggling, but I think we have strengths too. What do you think? Hmm. Uh, I personally think the one, one big strength of females is great communication skills. Uh, that's a little bit cliche. <laughs> like many people say, you know, women are more talkative, uh, women are better at communications, which I, I think is, is you know, you, you, can't, you can't say just like, Every woman is different anyway, but that's a fact that in general, uh, we are better at communications and especially um, give voice with uh, uh, and, and care about people in the organization who might be different, who might be uh, coming from a minority group, who have a more diverse background and approaches, uh, the so-called underrepresented group of people. So I, I noticed that uh, females or female leaders are more careful or are more um, um, aware of those existence and, uh, you know, be diplomatic, be, be communicative, handle conflicts better. I think that's one strength mm -hmm. we, we have. Yeah, I agree so much about the conflicts. I, I think like every time things are getting stressy in the office, like the women are just so on point with like they're talking to each other and they're working together. And it's just like us against the problem, not you against me. It turns less confrontational. I find that more difficult to um, make happen with men because I feel like, I don't know if it's an ego thing, but they suddenly like when it gets stressy or they're like, there's different points of view, like comms is communication, like I, I work in comms, so is always sometimes at odds with, I guess, marketing or something. You know, there's just so many times where we're at odds with each other just because our goals as teams are a little bit different, we measure things differently, and I find it so easy to find some kind of solution with women. And sometimes, not with, like, I have good communication with some guys as well, but like, I've noticed that sometimes they can be a little bit more... Um, more difficult to speak to, to find, to work together with. So, yeah. 
So um, since we're like coming up to time, I always open the floor at the end for all my guests and I ask them if there's anything they want to share with our listeners, any message they want to get across. So just like an open-ended question for you. I just want to call for actions. So uh, I wish anyone who might see yourself relevant to this project, join us. Uh, if you are a very successful entrepreneur or VC, join us as, a, as an ambassador. If you are slightly newer to the the um, the game or this industry, you know, maybe just participate in one of our educational program. If you're doing something relatively uh, small, like uh, you have a startup, you know, join us in the in the uh, all those worldwide. Um, blockchain for her incubation program. If you're traveling to maybe Satoshi Roundtable that I'll probably go next week in Dubai, or if you're traveling to East Denver in the United States, in, in Denver, um, you know, when you come across a Biget or a blockchain for her project, come and just be part of it. Awesome. I would love to meet uh, some aspirational founders uh, and females in the space as well. I'm actually 100% sure they would love to meet you as well. <laughs> Probably really excited. Well, thank you, Gracie. It's been a great episode. Thanks so much for flagging your report for me and for actually coming on and also supporting my podcast as well because I feel like I get a lot of support from women on this and um, it's always a pleasure. So um, for my listeners, thank you guys for um, tuning in today and we'll see you in a couple of weeks with our next episode. Bye. Bye.